I'm good too. Are yeah. You currently, you're in France, Paris. Yes, I've been here since 2018. I live here. Okay. Okay. Yeah. So I'll introduce myself. <laughs> okay. My name is Akash, and I have a YouTube channel called Trying to Know Cinema, and I live in Jalandhar, Punjab. Um, ah, but... I know Jalandhar. My grandmother used to live there. Okay. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Wow, so you day. have you have been in Jalandhar? Yes, because my father was actually posted there for three years. Uh, so have, uh, we were living in Jal- Jalandhar Cantonment. Jalandhar Kent. Yeah, I live in Jalandhar Kent. Ah, and I was studying in. We were in fifteen by ten, the Mall Road. Okay. Yeah. So, uh, <laughs> actually, my parents like we used to live in this the in Mall Road only. Ah, okay. Having a house, yeah. we used to live in like first. Uh, it was in rent. We used to live in rent. Hmm. So, okay. Oh, that's crazy. Yeah, my father was yeah because I also did uh, studied in Jalandhar for three years. Um, I did my fifth, sixth, and seventh in uh, Saint Joseph's. <laughs> okay, in Deepnagar or in like the, the Saint Joseph's, which was girls. Um, okay, girls Khalsa uh, College. Opposite. No, no, not yeah. Opposite the one which was, uh, oh, you know, the same road of cantonment. Got it. Like got when it. you get out of the cantonment, it yeah, is yeah. just there. Yeah. yeah. Wow. Oh. <laughs> so how how come you decided to start this podcast? Actually, I mean, ma'am, I want to become a filmmaker. That's why. Okay. That's okay. Why. Brilliant. So no, this be- is a great initiative. Yeah. Yes. So basically, actually, we are from Nepal. We speak Nepali at home, but like I actually uh, worked in Kathmandu last year on a feature film. <laughs> <laughs> wow, connections and stopping. <laughs> yes. <laughs> actually, we nev- I have never been to Nepal. Like my parents never been to Nepal, but uh, ah, okay. Like we lived in Jalandhar only. Like my parents also. Ah, okay. So you are in Jalandhar. So you. Um, have you been to a film school? You did. I mean, how? I, what have you? Actually, I'm done? working currently working right now as a web developer. Okay. So nice. plan is to go to film school, but you know, I found a job in Jalanda. It's paying well, so it's. Um, really, and really also, I think when you talk with people, technections from the industry, you also kind of, it is kind of like. You Making know, connections. you also get to understand film make make. Yes, yes. Uh, via departments, because mm. on your um, YouTube channel, I saw various. Uh, you have spoken with almost a lot of technicians and filmmakers. So it's yes. very fantastic. Thank you. It's a great initiative. Yeah. Yes, that's the plan. That's the plan. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's it's really nice. Thank yeah. you. Thank <laughs> you. So um, okay. let's start now. Okay. <laughs> Mom, what inspired you to become a production designer? Why you choose to become a production production designer? What inspired me? Um, you know, I got into production design just by default. I was working in documentaries before, and um, you know, but I've studied animation, and in that um, uh, diploma thing, there was also you know you also get to know graphic design and a lot of other things, and so I was working. So my PD, um, my first PD, uh, Bandana Kataria, who uh, designed Shanghai, she was looking for somebody to work on the graphic design um, for the film because you know Shanghai is a political film and uh, there was a lot of posters and a lot of things to design. It was a Dibakar Banerjee film, and we had a common friend, so she got me in touch with Bandana, and Bandana liked my work, and that's how I got into production design. uh that was my first feature but even after that i was already into documentaries and i was pitching with various filmmakers as a producer but just that you know documentary doesn't pay you so even after shanghai i was doing documentaries but then there was no money because documentaries till the time you get funding till you get the finance it's a long process and then i was like okay what can i do and then i was like okay uh you know i have this experience and i really enjoyed working in shanghai because also my introduction to production design was very interesting it wasn't just like an art department it wasn't just like oh you know you have to make big sets it was pretty much like how you are going to convert the script spatially and how you are going to 
Uh, so my so the introduction to production design was so interesting for me that later after doing the project when I was thinking, okay, now what do I really need to do? Um, I decided, okay, let's get into production design. Let's get into our department again. And uh, then I worked with a really big production designer called um, Sukant Panigari. And we did a film called Boss, you know, a very big Bollywood film. And that's pretty much where I learned the art department job of uh, a production designer. You know, we built big sets. There was a lot of construction. I understood how all of that worked. And uh, then after that, I think I got picky and then I just, I just also, you know, since I've studied film, it was also production design for me was also a department, uh, which is for me the right mix because you have, when you have a wonderful narrative and then you have to convert that into a space was something which has worked very well for me, you know? So I think uh, it's also, I love narratives. I've been reading since I was a child. And uh, even when you read, you always imagine, you know, it's uh, reading is imagination. You, when you're reading, you're imagining and creating, imagining and creating the worlds. So that is pretty much, you know, um, I think that is how that like narratives and imagery is what makes production design. You know, we have the spatial connect between the narrative and the imagery you finally see. So I think this is what really made me interested in production design. It was also very natural. It came very natural. I didn't have to struggle to understand um, what do production designers do, you know, in a sense, I think because of the introduction and also the great team I worked with in Shanghai, they were all filmmakers working together, all technicians, everyone. I guess that's how I really uh, got into production design. And then I continued there on to just work in production design. So yeah, that's how I got into production design. <laughs> I mean, yeah. you have before like working like you went to film school or yes I went to film school I got trained to be a filmmaker but I've also done um, diploma in animation during my uh, graduation in Bangalore so um, and after that uh, yeah but you know in my 20s um, I was not really very sure what I, because I come from a generation where, you know, you had your MBAs and you had your, uh, you know, that kind of a thing very laid out for you. So cinema was not something which was easily, I mean, of course you saw Bollywood, but it was not something which was, um, uh, you know, like people knew and how to get into cinema basically. And you didn't even know what kind of like job profiles uh, you could work in, you know, like what department each department has, what kind of job profiles, how you can work in cinema basically. So um, I reached it. Uh, I mean, when I first came to Bombay, I also worked as an assistant director. I worked as a director's assistant. And uh, then I got into, because I was also, um, you know, as a director's assistant, I worked with Ashwin Kumar, I worked with Rajan Khosa. Um, and uh, as an assistant director, you're pretty much involved in all the projects of the filmmaker at that point of time. So when I started working with Ashwin Kumar, he was actually um, distributing his film Forest. I don't know whether, you know, Ashwin, uh, is a national award film award winning filmmaker and he made a, a film called forest and he was distributing it at that point of time and so i got involved in that and then with that i was also uh, he was also kind of working on a documentary of the footage he had shot from delhi to um, you know to the highest point of southern india so he had done a road trip and he had taken a lot of interviews and things so i was working with him on that i was transcribing the interviews i was helping him out in whatever way so you know you kind of so i got introduced to a lot of different things and a lot of different departments in filmmaking with the way uh, you know it started like as an assistant director i, I mean of course I, I got introduced to um uh, the floor the shooting floor, but I was not a very good assistant director. I think I was a very, very bad assistant director. <laughs> it also, you know, because uh, it is a very organizational job and coordination job. And uh, I, I don't think I was, I, I, I didn't enjoy it at all. And I was really bad at it. So I'm, I'm good that I didn't get in, didn't do more of that. And um, 
And then while I was working with Ash- Ashwin, I got, uh, you know, documentaries always interested me because it's also the narrative. It, it's again narrative, you know, it's just nonfiction, but it's again a narrative based medium. So uh, because of that, then I kind of was like, OK, you know, I don't think I want to work as an AD. So maybe I should just work in um, documentaries. And in documentaries, I actually worked uh, with uh, Siddharth Kak. Uh, at some point when we were growing up, he had a serial called uh, Surabi, you know, where he used to talk about art and culture and all of that stuff. So um, he had, um, when I started work with him, he was uh, developing, he was working with uh, the Ministry of uh, External Affairs and a lot of other ministries from where he, and History Channel and Nat Geo Channel to develop these series on India which was a 13 or 14 uh, episode series, which which was called Colors of India. So I started working with him on that. Uh, I was hired as an EP, but you know, it was a very tiny little outfit. So you did everything. You made presentations to raise finance. You did uh, scripting if required. Then you also sat in post-production. And of course, the organizational uh, portfolio of an EP. So it's been a lot of kind of like different experimentation, not really experimentation, but experiencing different departments and different formats to understand that production design is perhaps, but I'm still interested in documentaries. Like I still would uh, like to produce, I would I'd still watch them, I still love them. And uh, because the world of documentaries is also, um, you know, normally you kind of see documentaries which are just reportage based, like in the sense, you know, that people are just talking. But um, there are also a lot of beautiful creative documentaries, which is really uh, like making a feature film, you know, because uh, you're kind of like focusing on a certain subject and you're kind of creating that kind of action. You know, you're, you're creating uh, a, a feature film. It's just not fiction. It's uh, nonfiction. So that's my journey been so far. <laughs> and ma'am, when you told your parents you want to get into film industry, like how was their reaction? They supported you? Yeah, my parents have always supported me. I mean, that's how I could go to film school also. They have always supported me because I was so lost initially after graduation that they were like, okay, what's going on? So I think when they realized that this is what I really like and this is what I want to do, then because, you know, I come from a military background and also um, a family of like uh, civil service officers and uh, civil servants and then all of that. So for them, cinema was also something which um, they didn't know how it uh, functioned because, you know, there was no link to that world. I mean, you see cinema because when you're in India, you cannot not see cinema. I mean, cinema is pretty much like, you know, what we say Bollywood now is pretty much what um is, is i think forms a very important uh, is, an, is an important fabric uh, element of our society it not only uh, influences um it influences fashion it influences interior decor it influences everything in india so of course like you know uh, i mean they knew about cinema we watched cinema but with them i also had uh, but my father and my mother also were very interested in watching um, what at that time was called art house cinema, you know, and so that way is, uh, yeah, they were very happy that I have uh, kind of found uh, what I would like to do. So no, there was no real, uh, op- no, there was no opposition. I have just had support from them throughout, throughout, really. It's been like that. <laughs> okay. And ma'am, your experience while working in the film, your it was your debut. Uh, uh, yeah, debut. it was my first uh, uh, project mm-hmm. as an independent production designer. And Kanuber uh, also debuted. Yes, yes, we all were first. We were a lot of first timers. I think yes. Siddharth had already done a project before, so he wasn't the first timer. Mm-hmm. But I think me, Kanu, even the first Shashank. TV, uh, Shashank, yeah. I mean, the actors anyways, uh, Shashank and Shivani. Um, uh, they were all uh, newcomers. Uh, how was my experience working in Titli? It was um, very, very problematic <laughs> and troubling because I was uh, shooting in Delhi. We were shooting in Delhi. We were shooting in 2013 in Delhi. And it was in, you know, peak summer when it's really, really hot. And Delhi, I think now has become more of a film city in terms of like, um, you know, there are a lot of shoots which happen now. So I think they have prop shops. So now it's kind of become, 
gradually a much better city to work in. But at that point of time, when I started, when we were working, it was just, it was really troubling to get work done because nobody was, um, you know, uh, it was so difficult. I remember there was that scene uh, where those, uh, where the car hits, you know, after the scene of the, um, the cinema scene when they rob the couple in the car. You know, they are in their own car and then there, there is this bump. So that bump I had to fabricate. I have to make that, I have had to make that speed bump. Just to get that bump to come on time was such a, oh, wow. I remember standing on Chhatrapur Highway at 2.30 in the morning asking my fabricator, where are you? And I've been calling him since the past, I think, the past two days and definitely a lot the whole day into evening into night and early morning so you know that's that 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 was my experience of working in Titli and Delhi so I I don't know I mean <laughs> it was but you know the script was really very interesting and it was uh, such a wonderful uh, script to work on and also that is when my collaboration with Kanu started you know and um, uh, so, to, to, first of all, to kind of like, you know, meet um, um, people who are um, directors who understand, uh, who, who even if they don't understand what production design can bring, can, gives the freedom to the production designer to kind of like, you know, uh, work on the way, on the, on the scenario, on the script as they want to, in the sense like there is, you know, there are a lot of times when you work, Everybody thinks they know production design. So you always get a lot of, you know, advisors and not even advisors. They just tell you, okay, you know, this is what you want and this is what it is. But it's a joy to work with filmmakers who kind of give you the, um, the freedom to explore, to experiment and to kind of build on the script. Because as a production designer, your main job is not only to translate the script spatially, but also to create this world which is believable, the world where the director comes, the DOP comes, the actors come, and they feel that they are in the world which they want, you know, which they're shooting, the story which they're going to say. So by that also involves so many things. It involves your locations. It's, not, it's just not about decorating. Even in terms of like when you're constructing a set, it also depends upon what do you want to say, like how your geometry of the set is based, based on like you know, like, do you want it to be claustrophobic? I'm just in a very simplistic way. I'm saying that do you want it to be claustrophobic or do you want it to be very like easy living and breathing based on the script? So all of that is done by the production designer, your color palettes, your textures, your um, even the kind of uh, even costumes for that matter. You know, basically you work with the director, of course, and also the DOP and you. You are the three, you know, the three people who come on board. Um, and uh, your initial recce's and locations are done by these three head of departments. And uh, based on that, like, you know, your entire visual um, palette of the film, by, you know, the, your, the imagery of the film is set. So it's such an important um, you know, department, actually. It's not just about building sets and uh, building sets, whether to build a set or whether not to build a set, whether to dress up a location or not to, or to, um, uh, you know, all of these are things which come after. When you start, when, when you start um, uh, working on a film, the first thing you do is you read the script and then you could, you, when you're reading the script, you know, if the script is good, it'll automatically give you a sense of the environment they want automatically you will have a sense and then you build on that if it's claustrophobia if it's this then what all can I add what are the stories of these people so you ask the director or the writer you know in, in a sense like what are the backstories and you kind of build keep you you get all these stories and that is when you are like okay you know this kind of story probably I will go for something which is more brutalist in terms of like very straight lines and very linear because this is a story which does not require um, you know, it, it, it's that kind of a film, you know, so, so 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 many kind of things which a production designer elements, which a production designer brings in, apart from just deciding the color of the film and the, you know, I don't know, the decoration of the film. That's just, that is a part of the process. That's not the only thing. <laughs> and then there's production yeah. designer and how many people under production designer are there? 
It depends, you know, it depends from project to project. When you have a um, you know, small, uh, like in an independent project, you don't have that kind of money to employ a lot of people. Also, you don't need those kind of, that many people because it's a contained project. It is not something which uh, is very big. So, I mean, it starts with your, um, you know, you would have like a set decorator. That is somebody who goes and uh, sources properties and uh, you know fabric and things uh, for the decoration on the set you would have a graphic designer who does everything related to graphics and uh, by that i mean from a postcard to a letter to a to a big um, uh, you know um, wallpaper or uh, even political campaigning paraphernalia things like that so that then you have assistants um, uh, who kind of are director who executes the design and then you have assistants who probably work with you on SketchUp or 3D uh, software to kind of, you know, get the floor plans and uh, set design and they're set designers and assistants. And then you have an art director who has a whole team of people working under him. And that is your carpenters, your painters, your, um, you know, your um, texture artist your there's a whole lot of people and he is the one who executes the design so you work out a budget based on the design with him and after that the job of the art director is to make sure that the designs which you have given which includes your floor plans your set design your color palette everything your texture all references everything given to him and the budget and it is his job to make sure that the design given to him is executed in the budget which has been made by him and me. So that is pretty much the job. And then he has his own team. And he probably has an art uh, assistant or two to run around to get things. Sometimes in a small film, you usually just have like, um, say in an Agra, in Tikli, I only had uh, uh, one assistant who wasn't really an art assistant because she wasn't really from art department. Um, but she was a great help. And uh, one intern. And I had uh, four workers. Uh, two painters and uh, one carpenter and one setting boy. So my team was just six people. <laughs> but uh, say uh, like in uh, Daddy, I had uh, a huge team of like, uh, I don't know, 200, 300 people with workers. And in Cora, again, I had a big team of like 10 assistants or something and then uh, a good number of uh, workers also. So yeah, basically. And ma'am, it is like all the set, everything is designed pre-production or like while shooting? It's all done pre-production. Basically, like you start with your, um, um, you start with your recce. After the recce, you know, uh, where you go scouting for the locations of each um, location which you have to scout. After that, uh, you know, you kind of finalize the locations and then uh, you kind of start this, uh, you uh, start working on what has to be done on each location for our department. So that could be probably uh, sometimes it's just a paint job, you know, because you don't do work in all locations. See, for example, in a series when you have uh, more than 70, 75 locations, in terms of I'm also including that uh, little uh, chai stand and whatever, all these are locations. So you don't uh, do major work on all locations, but there are like specific important locations which are which you see again and again and which form a very important part of the script is where you put in most of the work. So similarly in films also, when you have a lot of locations, like when you have a location of like a chai stand or something, normally you will find a chai stand already there and you will prop it according to the frame. You will use the things already there. But then uh, when you have to kind of um, do big set builds or even like restructure. So I have worked in a lot of uh, projects of mine, feature projects in which I have kind of restructured the... Um, uh, the existing uh, location, which I really enjoyed doing, you know, redesigning the existing location. So that would mean set, set construction, set construction. But with Kanu, uh, for that matter, both in Agra and Titli, we broke down the house and we remade the house according to how we thought it would work. You know, for the for the kind of like the tension between the people or the way we wanted to play out the scene. 
so we have actually taken real location homes in uh, Delhi and Agra and we have gone and broken them down and then we have restructured it and recolored it and retextured it and re-aged it to make it look that it has been the part of the family since uh, 20 years or 30 years. Um, but in so uh, I was given just a very big apartment which had nothing like the wirings were not even done. It was just a newly finished apartment. So that's when I kind of did, uh, I didn't do structural changes, but I did uh, set construction. So we designed, redesigned it and we added things. We shut off a door, we made the corridor longer, you know, and then uh, we also made a lot of divisions in between because the film sir, is about divide you know love and divide class divide so that got we got a lot of that into design by design just the way the way because initially in that house the um you know the kitchen opens into the drawing room there is there isn't any any break there isn't any division so the idea was to create as many divisions as many compartments as possible so as to kind of also uh, focus on the way you know on the class divide which is is the premise of the film as well not only the love story but the love story within the class divide so yeah so i think uh, like in uh, daddy uh, you know uh, when we started working we didn't really have a script so um, we started uh, the first schedule that we did was basically the big uh, set uh, which we made in varsova kolivara it's um, it is a is a dagri chawl set. It was a huge two hundred feet set in which we kind of uh, we did all the dagri chawl sequences. That was from the scratch. Uh, that I think we took about um, forty days or thirty days to thirty five days of um, uh, construction and of texturing and painting and decorating and doing everything and. Uh, so there we didn't, since we started off with that, we didn't have a location. It was just an empty, uh, it was a football, it was a ground, it was a huge ground. So we started with uh, making designs like, okay, this is how it would look, this is how we will make it, and you know, this is how the reach all will look. So the pre-production started with uh, set design, and uh, then we got into production and the post uh, pre-production, uh, making the sets and doing the textures and all of that. So yeah, so different project has a different uh, approach, but normally. Uh, no, all your work is done in pre-production, but there are chances also like in a series, uh, you might have liked a location and you might have finalized a location, but that location isn't available. So then suddenly you will have to uh, go into another location and design that location during production. That's a possibility. So it really, really depends. Uh, and ma'am, how much time or the uh, month it takes to create a set? And ma'am, while during shooting or uh the director can change it as well uh it, see the sets normally uh it takes a long time it, uh, normally see it depends upon how big the set is and it also depends upon how much your budget is yeah so normally um it takes um Normally, as a PD, I would love to have minimum of uh, three months of prep to do it, but it doesn't happen like that. It, like I told you, it depends upon the budget of the film. Uh, because when you start getting into star set design, that means you're also hiring people in your team. So that means that the salaries are also getting added. So normally, you don't get that amount of time. You normally get maximum i mean real prep where you're actually working and not just going to locations and talking about things but actually doing it is anywhere from two to four months but uh, like uh, i feel for a series normally you should have a really good like a good two three months of good prep like only prep where you are just um, the prepping the locations i'm not including the uh, the uh, you know the location scout and the chats after that I'm talking about the real work of getting the spaces ready I think I would love it but I don't think you see like I told you it just depends upon I mean I've not yet worked on a project where you get seven eight months of projects but I've heard those projects exist also I would love to have a project in which um, you know, you get a long prep. Normally in period films, you get a long prep, but in Daddy, we didn't get that prep. Um, but because in Daddy, we also broke it down into sketch. So the first sketch we did was completely um, 
a big set which we built of the Greek all. Then the second sketch we did, we uh, went into all the um, existing buildings of um, in Bombay, of old Bombay, and we created sets inside that because you know those buildings are no longer like the buildings they used to be the art deco buildings they're all dilapidated nobody takes care of them so we re we did a lot of set constructions inside uh, like you know we made a girls hostel into the jail so we did a lot of these kind of things as well so um, yeah yeah, so I haven't really gotten a long prep time. I would love to get a prep time of seven, eight now, maybe a year also. Why not? <laughs> For a big project, you need that kind of, if you want the project to be detailed, if you want a project to be like, if you have a grand big project, I mean, I think preparation is the time. If your prep is good in general, then, you know, uh, everything falls very smoothly. When your prep isn't good is when you will have maximum problems during production. And I'm not just talking about my department, I'm talking about all departments. Your prep needs to be really, really good. And ma'am, you have said you would love to do a sci-fi film or uh, dystopian film. So, can I... Yes, I would love to do a sci-fi film if somebody gives me a sci-fi film. I, I love dystopia, actually. That's one of the themes which I really, really like in um, narratives and... Uh, so, you know, uh, I, and, and most of my films have been a little dystopic, you know, they're in their own world, in a world which is very, um, uh, so, but sci-fi would be the ultimate uh, dystopia, you know, if I'm able to do a film like that, I would love to do a film like, uh, because I'm also kind of tired of doing the same, not, it's not the same, but like I'm tired of doing um, uh, the same kind of uh, textured, uh, you know, gritty and grime and all of that, like, I, I think I've done enough. I'm actually taking a break from it right now. And I'm not, uh, because most of the projects which I get are all the grit and the texture and the grime. And uh, I'm a little, um, I, I, I'm kind of like not taking up projects just for that, you know. You also get kind of typecasted if you have done a certain kind of projects. You get those kind of projects. Like when I, I remember when I finished uh, Titli, and when, well, when I finished Titli for a good one year, I didn't really have a project because nobody knew me, nobody knew what I've done, so I had no work. Uh, when Titli went into Cannes and the uh, trailer came out, is when people were like, "Okay, uh, we'll call her." But then again, I called for all all middle class homes in Delhi, be it in advertising or be it in features, and that's not what you want to do, especially especially since I didn't really have a great experience working in Delhi. I didn't want to go back <laughs> and do the same thing again. So, and that's, that's the one good thing about working in Bombay, that if you don't get good scripts, you can really get good amount of money from advertising. You can just keep doing ads, you know, so you really don't have to care much about, like, then you can really take your time to choose, basically, that uh, you would like to do this or you would like to do that. So, yeah, that way it's good. But, uh, huh. And ma'am, can you please tell me a little bit about Agra, because it again went to Cannes. It's not been yeah. released release yet, but uh, I mean, can you tell me about well, the story? Well, Agra, Agra is, um, uh, you know, we shot Agra in 2019. So now I have to just uh, come back. Yeah, so Agra basically is, um, is, is, is um, uh, you know, Kanu would be a better... <laughs> person to talk about Agra, but I can talk about Agra in terms of production design. Um, it is basically the, the house which we have created in Agra is the main action house and the whole conflict is about the house. Um, it is a family which, uh, a family of a son and a mother and the father and the stepmother who lives upstairs. So it is basically a two-storied house. The ground floor is where the mother and the son lives and the upper floor is where the uh, the father and the stepmother lives and uh, it is basically the exploration of uh, sexuality via the space inhabited by these people specifically guru who is the main who the story is about him and his his and his dynamics with space and his sexuality so it's a very interesting um, I think it's one of the most interesting uh, projects. Um, I mean, I really, I really like Agra. It is one of my favorite films, not just because I worked on it. 
I have liked it from the day I first read the script, which was, I think, way back in 2017. So it has been, um, so yeah, Agra is about, uh, in, in a sense of it, it is actually about, um, I think uh, to, for me, it would be like it tries, it's an attempt to explore uh, sexuality and space male sexuality and space uh, with respect to India. Because if you see, we have so many young uh, boys and uh, young men who are still staying with their families with really tiny spaces. But you know, your sexuality does not see spaces. It is there, it is in you. And how to kind of like, you know, how does one maneuver this? And does really one maneuver this? Does really one get a, how do you do it? You know what I mean? Like how something uh, so pivotal, uh, so vital, uh, like your sexuality and the space, like how does, how, it, it never blends, especially in India, especially in small uh, cities, or not even in small cities, in Bombay also, like in big cities also, maybe not in Delhi, because Delhi has a lot of space, but in Bombay also, in general, you know, you have like, uh, a lot a family of maybe two sons living together in a two BHK, which when you grow up, there's not enough privacy, there's not enough, you know, you don't have your own space, you don't have, um, so it's, it's an attempt to explore that. But uh, I think like to really understand Dagra, you need to really have an in-depth conversation with Kanu, because, uh, yeah. <laughs> okay. And ma'am, currently are you like doing any other projects? At the moment, I'm actually doing a multimedia project, which is very removed from production design, which is a long project, but I will be doing uh, my feature projects will start. There was a feature which I was supposed to do right now, but it got pushed to the end of the year. So my feature projects are going to start from um, August. Yeah. So I have two lined up as of now. And ma'am, can you recommend some films, which like your favorite yeah. films? You know, my favorite films keep changing. They, I don't really have... Uh, uh, at one point, I used to love Kabhi, uh, this one, Kabhi Haan, Kabhi Na, when I was younger. So you know what I mean, <laughs> they keep changing. But um, in terms of, uh, at the moment, um, you know, I don't know which one to say. I recently watched uh, Priscilla, though it's not available on Movie France. I switched on to VPN and went to Movie India and saw it. <laughs> I'm a big fan of Sofia Coppola. I just love the way she um, she's just a master in creating atmosphere, like you know, environment. And as a production designer, it's just so interesting um, to see that you know when. Um, when I feel, there are filmmakers who create atmospheres, there are filmmakers who create tension, there are filmmakers who create action, there are filmmakers who create drama. You know, all filmmakers have their own qualities and things. And for me, Sofia Coppola is, um, uh, I really, really like her. I also um, would recommend, uh, in terms of um, production design, production design, or in terms of a film? Uh, ma'am, first we can talk about your favorite film, then I'll ask you about production design as well. Okay, so I really like Mike Lee films. I like um, a lot of, uh, all his films, I like all his films. I like, uh, uh, I was a big fan of Jim Jarmusch at some point also. Um, I like, uh, I used to at some point really used to like films where people just spoke and those were the films. You know what I mean? Like Jim Jarmusch's film where you're having people are talking and there is this whole, uh, you know, thing being created and it's just so beautiful because you're not doing much but you're doing so much, right? And um, well, nothing is really coming to my head right now but... Uh, um, my most favorite film, which I really, ah, I don't know. Um, I will tell you the recent one because I don't really, I have, they keep changing all the time. So I don't know which one to say really. In the Mood for Love is always a classic. In fact, that's one film which made me get into cinema. So I think In the Mood for Love, which is a classic all the time. Um, but, um, ah, you know, you had told me you were going to ask me this question. I should have, uh, 
you know <laughs> done my a uh, little bit of my i should have revved up my mind a little bit but now i'm so like which film do i like the most um, um, mom can i suggest few films yeah <laughs> mom filmmakers in terms of production like wes anderson what are your thoughts <laughs> Wes Anderson I used to like Wes Anderson I think to the Royal Tenenbaum I'm not a big fan of him anymore I'm sorry I know a lot of production he is like the epitome of production design in terms of films but I think like I'm just I'm a little uh, I'm 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 kind of like over the aesthetic of Wes Anderson so no not Wes Anderson um I think in terms of uh, production design again uh, Yargos Lanthimos Yargos Lantimos is somebody whom I really really like and I I love Dog Tooth I I saw it many years back and that is a film which stayed with me and there are still some visuals which have stayed with me and his other films also Lobster the um, uh, the killing the deer I forget the full name the Nicole Kidman uh, the one The killing of the and, sacred deer Yeah, the killing of the sacred deer. But my favorite, my most, the one which I really enjoyed of Yargos was uh, Dog Tooth. It was one of the most craziest, dystopic, same, same brilliant same. films. Which uh, you know, like you can see what a brilliant man he is. And uh, Poor Things, which I recently saw in in the cinema, is a good film. But I really loved the costumes and, of course, the production design. But the costumes were just just brilliant as well. and um then in terms of uh, yeah so i think i was one more filmmaker huh? uh, roy anderson roy anderson uh, which which films uh, just uh, uh, tell me again which films has he made uh, the song from second floor has you seen it he yeah. makes really like weird films like he is uh... i think i have i might have seen his films but no i don't really um... Todd Solons was one of my uh, filmmakers. Uh, Palindromes is one of is a film which I saw um, many years back, like more than a decade or when it got out. I don't know when. And I really liked. He's very sad. Uh, his films are generally um, not what you would say happy films. But at some point in my life, I was a big fan of Todd Solons, like a big fan. And Palindromes because I or used to really like the way how he did. Palindromes. Palindromes is uh, you know different actors is playing different part of the same person of the same personality. It was uh, I really liked Palindromes a lot, and even the Dollhouse and uh, his uh, earlier work. You know, since the time I've gotten into production design, I've actually stopped watching films. <laughs> and uh, that that's kind of it it takes me a lot of a lot of an effort um, to go to a theater to watch a film you know i used to watch films i used to watch so many films before that but since the time i've gotten into specifically into production design i have uh, really and of course i like uh, also watching a lot of uh, stuff on movie you know i've been um, you know, subscribed to movie since 2013 or 14 way back so i've been kind of um, so that has been uh, you know i forget the names of a lot of uh, films which i've seen in mubi but mubi for me is like for anybody because now mubi is just everywhere and uh, for anybody who's interested in cinema i think it's one of the best platforms to really study cinema watch cinema and uh, really you have cinema from they're curated films they're mainly films who have gone to the festivals and uh, they're on the platform so i think mubi is one uh, i i like i clearly uh, don't remember a lot of uh, filmmakers and things i will say movie <laughs> movie you have a, a letter letter box account i don't have a letter box account okay. no okay <laughs> should i uh yeah like it's like a uh... you can see I mean I know film. that you can see the reviews of the you film. can see the yeah. which films you have seen like it's like that. ah like that no 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 I've not I mean that way so I barely go to the theater anymore mostly I see it online which is really bad considering I work in cinema I should uh, watch more cinema outside uh, in the theaters but yeah that's what I was saying like poor things is a film when it comes has it come to India right now poor things no when it comes to india one must must uh, see it in a theater because it is a film made for the theater that you will you're going to appreciate the design and the costumes uh, so much more
Um, have you seen the zone of interest? Actually, I have not seen zone of interest. Actually, I've it reminded me of, of uh, reminded me of little bit of dog food. That's all I'm saying. Ah, so maybe I should. Because I I missed it when uh, it was playing here in the theater. I don't know whether it's in the theater now or not. Uh, probably I will uh, see it online. Yeah, because I think you can rent it right now from Apple TV or something. Yeah. I'll definitely see zone of interest now that you have uh, <laughs> I said it reminded you of dog tooth yeah <laughs> the last question would be like if somebody wants to become get into films like become a set designer or production designer or become cinematographer anything what advice would you give to them uh in terms of what in terms of like what to do or what like how to get into it or uh, I think normally it's just um, if you're from a film school or from a design school, um, uh, if you have this, then normally you can directly get into a department. But if you want to really start from the scratch, I think like that is one of the most wonderful ways to do it because still you are not in a professional uh, on a professional movie set. You might have been in a film school. It's just two completely different worlds. So, um, you know, I mean, film school also, in a way, it kind of teaches you to dream a lot, which is good, like all art and design school do. But uh, the reality is a little bit different than that. Um, so when you, so for me, I think like, if you are interested in, um, in cinema, and you don't know what you really want to get into, uh, like what department would interest you the most, I think the best would be to, first of all, get in touch with the people um, like how I would say how I did it in production design because I had no idea about production design or like designers or so what I did how to get in touch with them so what I did at that time there was no face face there was no uh, Instagram the way it is right now you know it was uh, 2011 so it is it was not like you only had IMDB and Facebook maybe <laughs> so I went to the IMDB profiles of um, the films which I liked you know i made a list of the films indian films which i really like the films uh, bombay produced or mumbai produced films and there i looked into the production design of the films which i liked and then i got in touch with the production designer either through facebook mostly through facebook and introduced and introduced myself that you know i've done this and i want to be uh, i want to work with you and this is pretty much like most of the assistants have also gotten in touch with me like this they send me their cv the portfolio if you're an architect or if you are a fine artist or if you're a graphic designer or even if you just uh, have a good aesthetic sense um, i mean how i go select you know, choosing my i like working with different assistants from different backgrounds and not necessarily uh, film background or architectural background or things like that you know you could be a photographer if I think that you have the eye and you can do things I would probably hire you you know so it really depends upon how you present yourself how you present your work even if you don't have work it really depends upon how you present yourself and your intention and what is your objective to the HOD or to the director you want to work with. Most of the times, your skill sets, of course, if you are uh, qualified in a SketchUp or a 3D software, of course, will help you get a job. But also, it is about the way, you know, the passion in you, the intention of you, like, what are you going to give me as an assistant? Like, what are you going to bring? Because, you know, if you are a first timer, I'm not going to, uh, uh, you know, you're not, Definitely, I'm not going to put you onto something which you have no idea about. But, uh, you know, but if you come across as somebody, how you write? There have been times when uh, recently I got an application from someone to uh, work with me. And, you know, it started with a yo. It was literally a yo with an exclamation. <laughs> you know what I mean? Before it used to be at least a hey, hey, with an exclamation. Now it has gone to a yo. <laughs> so I think the best um, advice I would give anybody who wants to enter, if you have the resources and if you can, please apply for FTII or uh, FTII anyways, please apply for that. You can apply after your graduation. 
and uh, there are right now there are a lot of lot of courses uh, online as well and you know there are a lot of things like if you want to get into set design then you know you can just uh, learn the 3d software yourself because i learned it myself also i am a self taught production designer i didn't let it go into an art school or an architectural school or anything like that so um you know you can uh, you can literally learn what you want every all the information is available online so if you have a skill set if you want um, you know you can learn your 3d software and then apply and say okay you know i can do 3d or you can learn how to do graphics how to run these programs at least you know how to run an illustrator how to run a photoshop and be good at it so that could be a good skill set to get into an art department or if you don't want to do that and if you're interested in decoration then you know you can make your portfolio in a way like that you can maybe uh, take photos make a portfolio in a way present yourself like that of good looking spaces or you can you know there are a lot of people on uh, instagram right now they use this software called mid journey and they develop their own sets based on how they think they want to do it i think that's such a brilliant idea and that's such a brilliant way of presenting yourself to a production designer if you want to be a decorator that you know this is what i can do even if you don't want to do mid journey on photoshop you can just create your world like this is what i can do and then you know that's a, so i think it's very very important how to present yourself and generally since cinema is a visual medium it just helps a lot if uh, your presentation is also visual you know rather than uh, because it's not a corporate job so it's not going to be too much of talking it's going to be a lot of doing it's going to be a lot of running around when you first enter the cinema industry for sure and uh, yeah so i think that and um, for cinematography i think the best would again to be um even if you don't know anything about cinematography the best would be to get in touch with a dop and to explain and uh, you know the all of us have gone through many many years of struggle all of us have gone through a lot so it's uh, it's um, you all sometimes uh, you know it's not about how much you know it's also about how passionate you are what kind of interest you have and uh, you know so you can communicate with the dop and probably can take you on board not as somebody who will be doing the technical things but something which is much more you know i mean depends upon something some responsibility can be given to you that way you can see how the technical uh, side of uh, cinematography is how cinematography works and then if you're interested you either continue um, assisting a cinematographer or then you also go and study a little bit cinematography and then come back and uh, join the department but you know you can also learn it on the job so it's it's not like you have to go to a film school or you have to go somewhere to get into cinema i think it's um, to make it work in cinema more than anything else it requires a lot of spirit you need to have a really really strong spirit because it is a tough industry and you really have to be passionate about cinema because it is an art it is an art world you know in the sense it's not you, you it's it's not like um, and then it's a creative field so you need to have that passion for you to sustain it because there are a lot of ups and downs it's a lot of a it's 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 a, it's, it's, a, it's an interesting it's an it's an adventure so you need to be very you need to be prepared for this adventure you need to want this adventure and then you can decide what uh, uh, department you want to do and uh, you know either you can train in that and go ahead or then you can go back and study uh, and come back again or you know a lot of my set decorators are self trained so like you know so training is an added a plus for sure is important is sure but also your spirit you know that needs to be there and you shouldn't be like okay you know i don't want to work for 8 hours 9 hours 10 hours 12 hours 13 hours no i want to have this that shouldn't be there then because you know that do- it doesn't work like that really it, it, it definitely doesn't work like that because you have mad kids you work a lot a lot uh, but it's also the one thing is that as soon as you finish your work you see your work you know it's it's instant <laughs> it's an instant validation so i think that way is i guess um, cinema is one of as um, one of, I, i love cinema i just love the craziness of narratives and 
um, just the dynamics of imagery and narratives together, like in any form for that matter, uh, cinema or uh, any other form also. So yeah. Mm -hmm. Thank you so much Mom, for joining. Such a... Thank you for having me. I really enjoyed the <laughs> talking and congratulations on this initiative and Thank all you. the best Thank for you. your journey Thank as well. You. Thank you. <laughs>